Hey, welcome back to the show. You're listening to Business in Vancouver on Roundhouse Radio 98.3. We are the daily business news program from Business in Vancouver newspaper and BIV.com. I'm Tyler Orton. This summer, Shopify is conducting a cross-country tour. It's looking to convince more businesses to launch on Shopify's platform. This is called Shop Class, and with us to kind of provide what's going on with this particular campaign, it's Lindsay Thornton. She's a vice president of user experience at Shopify, and Sonia Shinji. She's a co-founder and owner of one of the businesses here locally that is using Shopify. I want to thank both of you guys for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having us. So, Lindsay, let me ask you this, though. Shop Class, what exactly is it? Just spell it out for listeners that aren't familiar. So Shop Class is an event that Shopify is running across Canada. We've already been to Toronto, Whitehorse, uh, Montreal and Halifax already. And next week we're in Vancouver. And really it's about celebrating entrepreneurship. It's about bringing business communities together in different cities. And it's also about trying to provide some education around lowering the barriers that we see to businesses in terms of getting off the ground and getting to that elusive first sale. Any uh, special offers you can uh, give people that want to be involved with this? Why, yes. We have a discount code for listeners of the show. That's BIV2017. And that'll give you 20% off any of the ticket prices. And they're already pretty reasonably priced. It's $30 a day or 20 for half a day. Well, that's excellent. And Sonia, I want to talk to you a little bit because you are using Shopify with your own small business. Uh, Tell me a little bit about Woodlot and how you're using Shopify to help out your own business here. Of course. So uh, Woodlot is a a natural company. We focus on home and body products for everyday use. We launched on Shopify in 2014, and it's been uh, incredible to see not only you know, the growth of the platform itself, but just uh, how much we can get out of it on a day-to-day basis. When you launched your business, I mean, I think a lot of entrepreneurs have to know that they have to have like an online presence, but is that daunting to a certain degree when you're a small business owner? You don't have, say, the billions of dollars that a lot of e-commerce companies have, you know, behind them. What were you thinking when you first got into this? Well, when we first got into it, yes, there's, you know, a lot of companies that want to spend a lot of money up front, but we use the tools that were available to us. So we started to grow our brand presence using Instagram and really use that as a way to share our products, our scents, and then used, um, you know, Instagram's bio link to, you know, bring customers back to our homepage where there was a lot of similarities between our Instagram page and our and our website. So um, I found that that really helped us get our product off the ground. And we also, because we have a product that is tangible and it's scent based, we were really looking at finding the right retail partners in Vancouver, in Toronto, and, you know, a lot of other provinces in Canada and uh, found that, you know, if someone discovered us in th- their favorite boutique and loved it, then maybe they'd come back and check us out online as well. What's your favorite product? I love, I mean, I'm biased. I love them all, but I love oh, our soap. Oh, they're all soap. like your children, right? I you, love, you it pick. is, it, I, it, I love our soap. I mean, it's something that we use every day and it is a really nice and nourishing soap bar. My partner's family is from Lebanon, so it's a family recipe that we've modified to really fit with our, you know, our West Coast kind of um, backyard. So I use it every day. So I'm going to have to give soap a shout out. I like that. I use soap every day, too. I think uh, most of our listeners, I hope most of our (laughs) listeners do. But uh, Lindsay, tell me, I mean, is is Sonia's story typical of kind of the Shopify experience that you always hear about on the road here on this campaign? Yeah, so I think we've got such a such a variance in the types of businesses that use Shopify today. So four years ago, our merchant base was a lot smaller than it is now. Now we have 30,000 businesses across Shopify using the platform or across Canada using the platform. And many thousands of those are in Vancouver. And I think we also know from BC in general, we've got maybe 400,000 businesses in BC more generally. Um, the government released some stats last year to say that about 30% of all wages paid to British Columbians came from small businesses. So it's really important to us that we listen to stories like Sonia's and we pay attention to what's happening in the business community so that we can provide solutions to better support those people. Well, that's just it. I mean, can you point to things that, you know, over the years, you realize Shopify needs to evolve to kind of meet certain needs that you're hearing about from a lot of these small businesses like Sonia's. Yeah, absolutely. So I think some of the classics for us are usually uh, access to funding, 
uh, feeling um, fear about failures that might happen, not understanding how to get products to market, not understanding or not feeling confident about the technical aspects of getting a business online because there's still so many businesses in Canada that, as you mentioned, actually aren't online yet. So um, a lot of the challenges are common and the landscape is really changing. So with the explosion of social media, with so many more um, technical products on the market now, uh, things are getting easier for small businesses in a lot of ways when it comes to things like prototyping and being able to test their business ideas. Uh, but it's by no means still easy to to start and run a business. It can be a really tough place. Yeah, well, Sonia, Lindsay just mentioned the explosion of social media. You're talking about how important, say, Instagram was when it came to getting your product out there, branding it to a certain degree. I, I mean, what would you have been doing, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, just relying on like a brick and mortar shop or, you know, old school kind of marketing? I, I'm just wondering about how entrepreneurship has kind of changed your mindset when it comes to business and kind of the best practices there? I think that, I think, I mean, we like to look at data. So I think even 10 years ago, there's ways in which data was collected that, you know, customer, uh, sorry, brand owners or businesses use to market or get in front of their customer. For us, it was, really identifying, you know, in each city kind of our product is all natural. And we know that Vancouver is a really great um, testing market for this type of uh, product because we're already living and breathing that wellness um, sort of space and that lifestyle. And so here it's we have- It's almost like Vancouver's brand, right? You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. I dig. Okay. And so we were able to identify, you know, there's a lot of great retailers that are in Vancouver that are um, supportive towards locally made products, Canadian made products. And we knew that our product could fit in well in, you know, a number of different types of um, segments like yoga or uh, independent boutiques. And so I think, I think, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think 10 years ago, it would have been a bit, um, I guess, challenging to get in front of a lot of people. So now having tools that allow you to kind of broadcast your business to the global audience is definitely helpful. I like the discussions about data. If you look at kind of the analytics that you can be provided, I mean, I, I know BIV, sometimes you get like spikes in readership from Mexico, and I'm not exactly sure why, but it's fascinating. Like, have you been able to figure out exactly... Uh, markets or, or that you never suspected of before that would actually be a good fit for you guys. Absolutely, we. Uh, so as I, as I go into work, we I'm living in our Shopify dashboard, and you know we're making a lot of decisions uh, based on what we see in the dashboard. So we saw that we were getting an influx so or top kind of traffic is, you know, Canada, United States. And then we were seeing a lot of uh, interest from uh, Hong Kong and Japan, which allowed us to maybe think about what are other markets that are really um, appreciating the made in Canada equity and, you know, digging deeper and getting some more information and knowing that that actually is true helped us, you know, identify like maybe this is an area that we might want to focus on as we continue to grow our business. Um, the dashboard provides so much other um, useful information for us as a business that we look into um, weekly. We can see, for example, if you know, you're know you a repeat customer, we can see what you're buying. Um, we can you know personalize the experience for you. I was, I was saying to Lindsay earlier that we if I see that you've ordered a certain scent and that you order that scent often, I'll throw in a uh, complimentary product in that same scent or I'll share another scent that's similar to the scent that you've already purchased so that you can experience something new from um, our product line as well. So I think that there's way to, ways within the dashboard to create some really um, special experiences for the end customer. So Lindsay, uh, Sonia just said sometimes she lives in the dashboard. I is that something that you love hearing? Like what what's, makes this such a special like tool for a lot of the entrepreneurs that you guys are helping out? Yeah, I, I live for comments like this. So um, I think what's really special for me about Shopify and, and why I've I've loved seeing the product evolve over a number of years is that it not only removes the barriers to getting started. So, you know, 10 years ago, it would have cost you tens of thousands of dollars to actually set up an online store. Today, you can do it for 20. So there's that. But after you actually get your business up and running, 
Um, I think we've put a real focus on actually using the incoming data that these stores are getting and these businesses are getting to help them make good informed decisions and to take away a lot of the, the really the grunt work involved in analyzing all of these different data sources that come in. We try and turn them into relevant insights for merchants so that they can get their jobs done faster and understand where to focus. Okay. So Lindsay, uh, for any of our listeners that uh, want to get rid of this grunt work that you uh, spoke of, uh, tell us again, what's that discount code for our BIV listeners? It's BIV2017, and that's for 20% off. Excellent. Well, Lindsay, Sonia, I want to thank both of you guys for joining us on the show today. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Well, that's Lindsay Thornton, Vice President of User Experience at Shopify, and Sonia Shinji. She's the co-founder and owner of Woodlot, which is based right here. And that's it for this segment. You're listening to Business in Vancouver on Roundhouse Radio 98.3. I'm Tyler Orton. We'll be back after the break.